Today, we're back on the eWaste Gaming PC, and it's going to get a big upgrade. Or maybe we'll call it a mini upgrade. Stay tuned. How do they call this case a mini? It's huge. When we started the eWaste Gaming PC project, the goal was the cheapest computer possible. We originally built this computer for $200, and the promise back then was is that we were going to turn this low-end system into a modern system. And honestly, it's getting kind of restrictive in this old case. So I've been shopping for a case for a long time for this project. and. <laughs> to be honest with you, I did not want to go with an O11 Dynamic because, to be honest with you, everyone uses the Dynamic. And honestly, I didn't want to just copy what everyone else was using. I wanted to use a case that I didn't see that often. And unfortunately, I kept coming back to the Dynamic because every other case had issues that I just couldn't resolve for the build that I wanted to make. And the Dynamic fit every single one of those issues. And honestly, now that I have one here sitting in front of me, I can see why it's such a popular case. This case is amazing. I mean, there are very few downsides to this case. In fact, let's go over some of the specs to this case so you can see what I'm talking about. The O11 Dynamic case is an aluminum case with a steel substructure. The bottom, the actual frame of the case is made out of steel, and all the panels that attach to it are made out of aluminum or tempered glass, respectively. Except for the plate that goes across where the I.O. is. That's actually acrylic, and honestly, it's definitely going to get scratched. Your I.O. is fairly minimalistic. You have the power button, you have an earphone plug, a USB Type-C 3.1 port, you, and then you have two USB 3 Type-A ports. And these are all on an acrylic panel. And honestly, I don't know what Lee and Lee was thinking, putting an acrylic panel on the part that you're going to put sharp objects towards all the time, but you know these are gonna get scratched, and I bet you everyone that owns one of these cases has scratches around the USB ports. If you have one of these cases and yours is scratched up, comment below and let me know. I really wish Lee and Lee would have made that top panel out of tempered glass as well, but you know, you can't have everything. The way you get this case apart is you take the top panel off first, and the top panel is actually connected with these little screw-on lugs that attach into little grooves in the top, and it slides off really easy. Once the top panel is removed, you can actually lift up the side panel, and it slides right out. Now be careful with this. If you're going to move this case around with the panels attached, you're going to want to be really careful not to drop these panels out because they will slide off the case if you pick the case up with the top panel off. Just like the side panel, the front panel comes off the same way. You just slide it up and out of the way, and then you can get access to the front of the case. Now, once the side panels are off and we can see inside the case, you can see it's got two different grommets that you can use to run your cabling from the back compartment in the case to the front so you don't have a lot of cabling exposed in the front. You just run them all through these grommets and it should give you a pretty easy time of cable management. And also, speaking of what fits inside this case, the way this case is designed is it's designed as a modular case. So you can actually reconfigure what motherboards fit in this case and how those motherboards fit inside of this case. For instance, if you look at the back, the way it comes out of the box is in a seven slot configuration. This will accommodate ATX, micro ATX, and ITX motherboards. And you can also reconfigure it down to a five slot configuration so you can give yourself some room on the top for a radiator. Now in that configuration, you can actually fit micro ATX and ITX motherboards. And then finally, you can also configure it into a three slot configuration that just accepts ITX motherboards, but it gives you a ton of space on the top and you should still be able to fit a three slot GPU into the bottom. Now, in order to fit ATX and micro ATX motherboards, there's an extension that actually comes off of the motherboard tray that gives you a little bit of extra room to screw your motherboard down. And now this will actually block the little rubber grommets, but you should still be able to use those grommets to run all of your cabling around the extension. Now the back panel on the case comes off just like the top panel does. You undo the thumb screws and then it should just slide right out of the way. 
And in the back of the case, you can see that this case here accepts SFX power supplies. In this case, I actually got with the Lee & Lee 750 watt modular power supply already installed. And then back here, you also have room for two two and a half inch SSDs mounted on this vertical bar here, as well as a little drive cage. Let's take a look inside that drive cage. So to get into this cage, you undo the thumb screw on the back of the computer and move it out of the way. And then you have two three and a half inch slide out drive caddies inside of there. Now there's not a whole lot of room for expansion inside of this case. You literally only have room for two three and a half inch drives and two two and a half inch drives, not counting all your M2 slots that you may have on your motherboard. So you should have adequate storage, at least for gaming. At the top of the case, you have a magnetic dust filter that sticks on to the rails where the top radiator would go. And then on the bottom of the case, you actually have a slide out dust filter that you just push down and then pull out on and it will pull out of the tray on the side. Now I noticed this one here is kind of difficult to get in and out of the case. And honestly, this is another thing that I think is kind of weird, but it definitely works. And the only other option would be to put a magnetic filter across the bottom and then that would require you to lift the case up in order to get the filter off. So. I think in this case, they probably went with what was the best trade-off in order to get this filter on the bottom. And then on the back panel, you also have two more magnetic dust filters. Now, since the back panel is an aluminum panel, it actually has these little metal strips that are actually stuck down onto the back panel in order to accommodate for the magnetic filters. So these should be really easy to take off and maintain as well. And this case comes with all the screws that you would need to assemble it, and they even give you some tie straps. It's always nice to have some tie straps. So that's just a general overview of what this case is about. And what we're gonna have to do now is actually transfer all the components from our e-waste gaming PC into this case. And to do that, well, we're gonna have to take apart the e-waste gaming PC. So let's rip it all apart. All right, so. This is essentially our e-waste gaming PC. Now we're going to get rid of this case here and we're finally going to put everything into the dynamic and see how it comes out. So, what do I think? Well, it looks good, that's for sure. It's actually a great looking case. And you know, most of my initial impressions are actually still true. There are a few things though that I didn't like about the case. First off is the acrylic. The acrylic near the I.O. in the front, it, it's just gonna scratch. It's gonna look horrible over time. And I really think it wouldn't have taken much to actually put in another tempered glass panel right there. I think it would have done a huge bit of good for this case if it had that. However, you know, I honestly think they would have been better off leaving it aluminum and painting it than putting acrylic in it, but it is what it is. It's still a good looking case. And as long as the acrylic's not scratched, it's still gonna look good from the side, at least. The next complaint that I have is with the Velcro straps during inside of the cable management channel. You'd be best off just ripping those Velcro straps out and throwing them away. They are absolute garbage. Honestly, at least you have the mounting points for tie straps in there. And unless it's something that you're gonna take apart all the time. The Velcro in this thing, it sticks together, it folds over itself, and it's impossible to try to get it open, to stay open, to run your cables in. That was one of the biggest frustrations I had was building it, was trying to cable manage with that stupid Velcro. Honestly, next time I go into it, I'm probably gonna take those Velcro strips out. Other than that, honestly, 
I really don't have any other complaints. It's a great case and I can see why everyone uses it now. Lee and Lee cases are known for being extremely high quality and this one here is no different. It's an extremely high quality case. However, it's not cheap either. I spent $200 on this case with a power supply and you know, that's really pricey for a case, but the finished result is actually pretty nice and I'm really happy with it. So while it's an expensive case, I think it's definitely worth the price. This is a case that you can use for a long time to come because I see this case outlasting this computer. And honestly, at the rate that we've been upgrading this computer, that's actually a very good possibility. So now the only problem is, it looks kind of bland sitting there with no RGB or anything in it. So honestly, I think there's another upgrade to come. In fact, we have an upgrade planned for next week. And I'll give you a hint of what that upgrade is going to be. But you know, I guess you're going to have to wait until next week to find out. If this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.